We want somebody that wants to be a Bruin. Well, we didn't get somebody that wants to be a Bruin. We got a Bruin. Come on out, folks. Your new head coach. <laughs> UCLA yesterday, A.D. Martin Jarman announcing the hiring of Deshaun Foster as the Bruins' new head coach, replacing Chip Kelly, who left to become the offensive coordinator at Ohio State. And I think it's safe to say from that reaction, it was a popular choice with the players. Foster, former Bruin All-American, spent the last seven seasons on Kelly's staff as the running backs coach. He'd actually left for the NFL over the past couple weeks, accepting a job as the Raiders running backs coach before Jarman lured him back to Westwood. As promised, Anthony Heron joining me now. This feels like one of those situations, Anthony, where I don't know if you can sit here and say, well, it's a home run hire, or mm -hmm. you can sit here and say, well, it's not. It's TBD, right? We're talking about a guy with an incredible history at UCLA, both as a player and as an assistant coach, but also someone who's not been a head coach, who's not been a coordinator. So I think this is one of those where you kind of take a wait-and-see approach. It's not the standard order of succession for a coach right. to become a head coach, especially at a major program like UCLA. But the timeline for Chip Kelly's departure is, of course, a big part of that reason why. And so there, there are some examples that I would say, even of recent vintage, where we've seen coaches who, who have been thrust into a position where the timeline perhaps didn't agree with them, or even just the hiring cycle didn't necessarily suit the program where there has been some success. I mean, I don't know, you know, Pat Fitzgerald wouldn't be one that that's that would be considered that recent, but obviously under the, after the untimely demise of Randy Walker, then he ends up getting the opportunity to be the head coach at Northwestern and ends up, you know, leading them to an, a really impressive stretch of wins and championship. Yeah, when he's coaching school history. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, you know, that worked out. Dabble Sweeney. Dabble Sweeney, he was one I was thinking about. Clemson. You, you know what? Terry Donahue, who is arguably mm -hmm. the most successful coach in UCLA history, was the same thing. I mean, he, he was yeah. a position coach. He was not a coordinator. He had played at UCLA. Mm -hmm. And look at what he turned into. I mean, yeah. was one of the great coaches, not just in UCLA history, one of the most successful coaches in the I guess, Pac-8, Pac-10, Pac-12. Yes, right. right? So, in the Pacific I mean, time, yeah, yeah, right. Yes, on the West Coast. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I mean, obviously there are precedents for, for this working out really well. But you talk about the timing, too, and, like, let's just put it all, all out on the table. When your coach leaves, your players have 30 days that they can leave. The yeah. portal opens up for them. So from that point of view, you want to have a coach who players want to play for. Mm -hmm. And it is very clear from watching that that the players want to play for him. And we've already gotten through the recruiting cycle. Both signing days right. have taken place. And so, you know, that, that put UCLA, their administration, in a position to try and make sure that not only was it a coach who, who had passion for the program and could communicate that passion to the program, but had familiarity with the roster and, frankly, the coaching staff that's in place as well. So that's an advantage to hiring Deshaun Foster here where he's been on staff there in Westwood for so many seasons at this point, knows the coaching staff inside and out as well. We'll have hires to make on the offensive side, especially with offensive coordinator. But on the whole, it, it is a program that has developed talent really at an impressive rate when you think about the fact that Chip Kelly, whether at Oregon or at UCLA, has never been one of the renowned recruiters in the country just from a sheer star rating perspective. Right. But he's developed talent at UCLA. When you look at the running back position, the talent yeah. that's gone to the National Football League and the way they've run the football, top 20 in the country in rushing for the last four seasons at this point. And Deshaun Foster is viewed as the, the most integral reason why. Because as the running backs coach, he's been able to develop talent over and over again, send guys to the NFL. And so now there's an opportunity to take what he's done in developing that running back room and sort of, you know, exponentially see if he can mushroom that out to the entire program and have the development that's been in place at UCLA and have that roster continue to develop under his watch. Led the Pac-12 in rushing each of the last two years, something they hadn't done previously since 1976. Now, I think you can make an argument, hey, it's Kelly's offense, and Kelly may have had something to do with that. Right. But again, it, these last couple of years, they have run the ball extremely well. I do want to ask you quickly about Kelly. Mm. What do you make of his move to Ohio State? 
it seems to be just kind of the latest example of something we've seen in recent weeks where coaches who, when you have an opportunity for something that might feel a little bit more comfortable, let's say, because if you're a head coach in modern college football and you're seeing the way the landscape is shifting, then there are guys who get a little bit uncomfortable with it and they're trying to figure out what is going to be my lane in this moving forward. So whether it's an opportunity in the National Football League or like this where Ohio State opens up after folks were anticipating that would happen with Bill O'Brien leaving. And then Chip Kelly has one of his best friends coaching right. there in Columbus. I don't see this as being something that is, is viewed as, you know, sort of an ec epidemic that will infest college football where a bunch of coaches will leave because not everyone has what they may view as a better or more comfortable opportunity that is still of prominence. But there have certainly been examples of that as of late, and I don't think it should be ignored. But the system is going to continue to evolve and adjust. So I, I don't necessarily see this, and especially the Chip Kelly example here, as, as one that a lot of folks who are, who do have legitimate concern about how the sport moves forward, that we should really be overly concerned about no one's going to want to coach college football. These are still amazing jobs and incredible opportunities. I think it's really important to consider the context, too, of yes. the previous relationship of Day and Kelly. They're right. both from New Hampshire. They're very good friends, know each other really well. This is an opportunity to work together. I don't think Chip Kelly would have left for just any exactly. OC job. Exactly. This was a unusual opportunity one that opened up as he said bill o'brien took the job and then ends up going to boston college and yeah. just kind of makes sense for for chip kelly to go to columbus